Hello, my name is Peter Varda from Marship. We're doing a series of presentations on the story of modern diesel, if you like. Why is diesel such a problem now? Why is it that we could store diesel in 30, 40 years ago for years, and now we can't store it for longer than six months, basically? So let's go back. Let's look at one barrel of, of crude oil. Typically, it would have come from maybe the North Sea, it was a it was Brent crude, it was a sweet crude, had a, a, a sort of maximum sulfur content of about 0.3%, something like that. It would go through the normal fractional distillation unit. And out of that, we would get about 40% finished product from that one barrel. Sulfur content was the same, approximately 0.3%. Nobody was interested particularly in sulfur. We didn't at that time have the problems of the, the so-called acid rain, for example. That would go on to us, the end user, into shipping, agriculture, fishing, or whatever. Now, let's fast forward to today. That one barrel now comes from global oil fields. It'll come from Saudi, Russia, Venezuela, South America. It comes from places that were deemed poor quality and uneconomical in the 80s. They now have to drill deeper and horizontally to get to the wells. They're going into deeper oceans, jungles, Antarctic to get to the to the wells that were just uneconomical to, to extract the oil in the 80s. Worse is they're now getting that oil they're getting, that crude they're getting, has a sulfur content of sometimes greater than three, can be even up to 5%. Now, it has to go through so many more processes before we can now get our finished product. But we're not getting just 40% finished product anymore. All of those processes, meaning we are getting 50% more finished product from a crude, which is actually less quality than it was before. So we're now getting 90% finished product. To do that, it will go, still go through a fractional distillation unit, for example. It'll go through a hydro desulfurization unit, hydro cracking, unification, cat fluid catalytic cracking, and many, many more. And all of those together will give us our ultra low sulfur diesel 0.001%, 10 ppm. Now, this crude, this oil has been it has been refined to within an inch of its life. It is highly unstable, it's stressed, it lacks a lubricant because the aromatic and the polar compounds have been removed, it lacks that lubricant, that inherent lubricity, if you like, and it leaves deposits. If you Google IDID, that's internal diesel injector deposits, Google that, you'll find there's a lot on the net about that, that problem. However, from that point, as we, we, we get our end product, our, our, our finished product, you'll go to a blend plant, and from there we'll go to become marine gas oil, A2 red diesel, for example, or EN590. Who is Marship? Marship specialise in fuel management systems. We remove water from fuel tanks. And water is the single greatest contaminant in diesel. I've been involved in, in ships for 40 years, um, diesel particularly, and, and problems with fuel. Now, a lot of people want to run around and, and polish fuel. It's not always necessary. What is necessary is you have to remove the water. Now, in 2020, we were awarded a patent, a patent for our own fuel separator. We looked at the market, we realized there was nothing on the market that was going to just use do that dedicated removal of water without any consumable filters, blocking filters, etc. So we invented our own and say so we have a, a patent now. This is the heart of what we call the diesel dipper, the diesel drake and the diesel duck. No presentation on modern diesel would be complete without a mention of fuel additives. Now, most people start glazing over when you talk about fuel additives because they've had such a bad name for decades now. Uh, snake oil is the first thing that comes to mind but there has never been a greater need for fuel additives than now. Because of all the water from the fatty acid methyl ester, it's hygroscopic, it sucks the water in, there's a lot more water about, hence the reason we make our products to remove that water. But if you've had water, you could, you could or will most likely get diesel bug. 
These are pictures of Dieselberg. That bottom left-hand corner there was from a fishing boat owner in the North Sea. He broke down, had to be pulled in by the RNLI, the, the lifeboat service. Our diesel AB is broad, broad spectrum bias side, and we have engine manufacturer approval for that. We also manufacture something called diesel LDB. It has a lubricity, a detergent, and a little bit of biocide to keep the diesel bug at bay, if you like. The detergent is very important, as I was talking about earlier, about the internal diesel injector deposits, stops the deposits, stops the smoking, stops the increase in fuel consumption, and you'll soon notice it if you're, if you're finding it more difficult to start the engine. I hope this presentation was um, useful to you, and if it was, please press like and subscribe if you'd like to see the other ones as they come along. Thanks a lot.